Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. How much does uh, baby boy Hunter owe in taxes? Well, uh, listen to the big guy talk about it. Over a billion, three hundred million, trillion, three hundred million dollars. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, know. I kept listening to that this weekend, laughing. That's a lot. Mm. I actually, uh, he was talking about uh, his investment, meaning your money, right. the amount of money he spent on rail infrastructure in this country to uh, union guys in vegas but uh yeah, and everyone's wearing those build back better t-shirts and yeah. hats. oh wait they're not million, and they're not even mentioning Bi- bidenomics anymore because it's billion a 300 million trillion. trillion billion it's a lot <laughs> um on the um indictment that uh, came down against uh, baby boy hunter last week the smartest person president biden knows by the way remember? that's right Excellent. um jonathan turley had a good uh column on this over at the post new york post of course the steps taken by hunter to evade taxes like the million dollars roughly he spent on strippers and sex clubs and stuff the um steps hunter took to evade taxes are impressive but not nearly as impressive as the efforts by the justice department to evade any direct implications for his father the indictment is a marvel of invasion writes georgia washington law prof jonathan turley so he a uh, number of things he brings up one which we've talked about quite a bit of course the allowance of the statute of lim- limitations to run on other tax evasion by david weiss um also the um failure to charge hunter biden as illegally operating as an unregistered foreign agent the justice department added a charge to the indictment of senator bob menendez saying he ran afoul of FARA, foreign agents registration act of course, uh, that was used against Trump associate Paul Manafort, too. Exactly. But he writes that the problem with charging with Hunter with FARA, a FARA violation, is obvious. It opens up questions about the millions of dollars going to the Biden family from foreign sources, a topic that Attorney General Merrick Garland has spent years avoiding. And he's done a nice job. Um, he also uh, makes this point by focusing on tax evasion alone rather than the source of the money. Weiss avoids any direct reference to the focus of the influence peddling used to raise these millions of dollars. That would be Mr. 10 percent, the big guy. Uh, As Turley concludes. It takes perfect aim to avoid any contact. Nicely tailored indictment from that uh, paragon of prosecution. David Weiss. Sure. Right. Uh, Byron Donalds, uh, the congressman from. Southwest Florida. He's your congressman, right? He is. Boy, talk about an upgrade. I went from Danny Davis to Byron Donalds. <laughs> that is an upgrade. Woo! Yes, it is. Wow. Um, anyway, he's on with Bart Romy yesterday, also addressing the curious timing of this new indictment. A week before Hunter Biden's appearance was demanded by the House Oversight Committee, subpoenaed for a behind closed doors dep. Listen to Byron Donald. Uh, I'm just wondering if the timing of this indictment on Hunter Biden uh, is uh, a partly cover up because the DOJ had this information. They've been sitting on this for a long time, but they decided to indict Hunter Biden the weekend before he was supposed to go under oath in a closed door testimony. Look, I totally agree. The timing is suspect. And let's take a step back. His attorney, Abby Lowell, says that, oh, the only reason why he got indicted is because his last name is Biden. No, Abby, the only reason that it took so long for him to be indicted is because his last name is Biden and because House Republicans uncovered this web of corruption surrounding Joe Biden that implicates Hunter Biden and James Biden. And so that is the reason why it's taking so long for this to occur. Yeah, we're supposed to get that uh, vote on an impeachment inquiry, formal impeachment inquiry this week as well. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined again by George Perry, former federal and state prosecutor, regular contributor to the American Spectator. He blogs at knowledgeisgood.net. George, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Well, good to be with you. So um, what about let's start with the timing piece of it and then get to the substance of the indictment. Do you find uh, the timing of this uh, happening just before Hunter was uh, 
uh, commanded to appear uh, curious at all? Uh, not really. I mean, Hunter could kick the fist at any time with or without these charges pending. Uh, so I'm not particularly troubled by the timing. I'm certainly troubled by the content of the indictment and the fact that you've got a prosecutor who didn't even want to bring the indictment in the first place. Um, you know, those are, to me, those are bigger, bigger issues than the one raised by the congressman. Uh, well, um, I mean, it's not that uh, Hunter Biden would comply, uh, likely comply with the subpoena. He wanted to do an, an open hearing mm -hmm. as opposed to a closed door DAP, which is the process that has been used for every other person who's been yeah. called to testify. Um, what's the play there? Uh, Hunter, Hunter uh, through his attorney, Abby Lowell, offering to testify at an open hearing, but not behind closed doors. What's he doing there? Well, usually... Uh you would you would expect that they would want to testify behind closed doors um you know lowell i'm, I'm you know frankly I, I wish i could answer that question um because i don't understand what lowell's doing i know that with lowell claiming that these charges would not have been brought if biden if hunter's last name wasn't biden i think he's laying the foundation for a pardon by Joe, because there's going, they're saying already that this is nothing but MAGA Republicanism gone wild. And so I could see Joe Biden coming forward at some point, if all else failed, in other words, if Weiss managed not to deep six this thing, um, I could see Biden coming forward saying, yeah, this is just all political. This is MAGA Republicanism. And I'm now pardoning my son. Well, oh, no, no. He has said repeatedly, even on Friday, um, I mean, KJP was, you know, he sticks by his original statement that he will not pardon his son. Well, we'll see what happens after the election. Yeah. The question is, can he avoid a trial before the election? Yes, he can. Mm -hmm. he can. Oh, yeah. Um, how convenient. Look, under, understand, understand this. You have a prosecutor here, this guy Weiss, who four months ago, tried to bury this tax case along with every other criminal act Hunter Biden has ever committed in this sweetheart, no jail demeanor plea deal on the gun charge down in Delaware. That's the, that's the prosecutor you're dealing with. That's the avenging angel who is prosecuting yeah. Hunter Biden on these tax charges. So, this this case is not going to get priority treatment by anybody, especially in this Justice Department with Merrick Garland at the helm. Well, and with respect to uh, the the volunteering to testify in an open hearing, but not behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. uh, Abby Lowell knows that what the protocol is for the House Oversight Committee, what it's been for every other witness. He knows that Republicans will object. Uh, he knows that uh, if Hunter defies a subpoena, there, I mean, he can be held in contempt of Congress, but what does that really mean? It's not like he's going to be prosecuted by the Justice Department. And he's not Steve Bannon, for God's sakes. So, um, so it's the appearance of being willing to cooperate, knowing that, but, 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 but essentially being unwilling to cooperate, right? I mean, is that possible? Well, that's that's possible. I mean, you're you're talking about political calculations that uh, are way above anything I ever had to deal with. Uh, as a prosecutor and defense lawyer, I I only handled ordinary criminal cases involving mobsters uh, and dope dealers. So those guys weren't concerned about the political ramifications of the charges. So I'm afraid I'm just a dry hole when it comes to those calculations. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, those guys were probably a lot more sophisticated than the influence peddling operation these hillbillies from uh, Delaware were running. <laughs> well, well. The Biden family uh, around here, and I'm, I'm just outside Philadelphia, so I've been following the antics of the Biden family for decades. Uh, it was no secret that these guys were a bunch of crooks. Um, you know, he cultivated this Scranton Joe Biden, just a regular guy image. But the people who were paying attention, and these are my friends who are professional politicians, have been saying – for the last 30 years, Joe Biden is a crook, and uh, sooner or later it's going to catch up with him. Well, they're right. He's a crook, but I don't think it, even with this indictment, I don't think anything has caught up with him. 
And um, the uh, prospect of a plea or maybe even uh, another question, why they couldn't come to some sort of plea arrangement here. Um, he can't plead out, right? I mean, uh, you, he can't plead out because it would be incumbent upon Weiss then to say, well, now we have to go follow the money and we have to talk about where the money flowed when it came to Hunter. And that's not something he can testify to um, because it would implicate Mr. 10 percent, the big guy. So he's got to go the distance here and take whatever punishment is meted out, right? Well, yeah, and, and, and keep in mind, this case landed in the courtroom of a Trump-appointed federal judge. So if they go to do a plea deal, they're going to have some real problems on their hands because that judge I'm anticipating would just not roll over and let Abby Lowell write the script for the plea agreement um, or, or would endorse a plea agreement without challenging what Abby Lowell and Weiss are going to collude on. Um, so the, the, the thing that struck me about the indictment was it's kind of like this money that Hunter got just fell out of the sky. You know, there was no mention whatsoever about influence peddling, which was really the only product that Hunter Biden had to sell, which was access to his father. It doesn't talk about any of that. It's just like, well, Hunter Biden's walking down the street and all of a sudden millions of dollars just rain down on his head. And it's got nothing to do with anything other than, than Hunter. And, and if you read the indictment, and God help me, I read all 57 pages. It talks about Hunter Biden being a Georgetown and Yale educated lawyer. Yes. Like he's got some skill set, some extraordinary skill set. You know, the guy, the guy to me, comes across as somebody who really knows how to have a good time with hookers and dope. So well, yeah, he spent set. five That's million on crack, new teeth, prostitutes, hookers, <laughs> cigars, and so much more. I mean, what's not to love? He sounds like a fun guy. Uh, he likes to party. Well, speaking, speaking, yeah. as, speaking as a federal Hoya, a fellow Hoya, I'm so proud of Hunter. Um, I mean, look, when you when you put this thing into context, I mean, go back to when the Hunter Biden laptop was swallowed up by the FBI. You got the FBI, you got the Department of Justice, you got Weiss, you got all these people who are supposed to be going after the guy, doing everything they can to make this stuff go away. And the only reason we're here is because you had two IRS whistleblowers who came forward before Congress and said, you know, the, the Justice Department did the best it, it could to just kill this case off. So there was an embarrassment factor that compelled Weiss to say basically, oh, all right, we'll file this thing, but we're not going to do much with it. And I'm confident that Weiss is not going to push this case. He's not going to come after Hunter Hammer and Tongs. He's just going to go through the motions. And if push comes to shove, Joe, despite all of his promises, will come forward and say, you're not going to do this to my kid because this is just mega Republicans uh, making trouble. So, Well, as Jonathan Turley said, you have to have a perfect aim to uh, avoid all these targets, starting with the big guy, which uh, Weiss <laughs> and Mick Garland have ably done to this point. George Perry, former federal and state prosecutor, regular contributor to the American Spectator. He blogs at knowledgeisgood.net. George, thanks as always. Okay, great being with you. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's like a hot, steaming cup of information to start your day. It's Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. Do you have a home remodeling project you'd love to get done? This is your opportunity to lock in this year's pricing with Chicago's Design Build Dream Team. Forever Remodeling is now offering exceptional savings. Simply sign on by December 31st to avoid any price increases next year. At Forever Remodeling, their expert designers and installers will turn your dreams into reality. Act now and you'll not only protect yourself from future price increases, but also beat the rush and secure a preferred spot in their schedule. Call 847-809-3355 or visit Forever Remodeling Com. Highly skilled to design and build. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my business bank. 
And this is Brian Duncan, co-founder of Signature Bank. We wish you the very best this holiday season from Signature Bank, Chicago's business bank. Signature Bank helps local businesses succeed. Let Signature Bank turn your business vision into reality this holiday season. Visit SignatureBank.Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We're doing it. We're getting closer to our goal to feed children in Latin America and the Caribbean. And we're teaming up once again with our partners and good friends at Food for the Poor. They're a face faith-based nonprofit relief organization. They work directly with their partners on the ground in Latin America and the Caribbean to operate feeding centers.